Hello, hello! How's everyone doing? I'm gonna be giving you guys my quick review for Supergirl Season 3. And there's gonna be spoilers in this review, so that is a warning if you're not all caught up yet. And I am not gonna be breaking down all 23 episodes in this video, so I apologize in advance. If I don't mention something I do enjoyed about this season, and this season has a bag full of goodies, it really does, so I'm just handpicking them out, like which ones I really do want to talk about the most. So, yeah. So that, that, now that's that out of the way, um, Supergirl, like when the season starts, you basically see Supergirl buried in her emotions from the hard decision that she had to make in the season 2 finale. So yeah, when, when this season starts, she is basically, you know, like where she puts herself more towards being Supergirl and saving people as opposed to having a balanced life, like where she is Supergirl and Kara. Um, she basically detaches herself from her friends and stuff and then she is more so being Supergirl and just keeping her trying to keep her mind off of that decision she had to make would you know like where it forced her her you know the love of her life Monel to leave you know and I and I really felt bad for her in this first half of the season I really did I mean I just wanted to give her a hug like it's gonna be okay there is still light at the end of the tunnel it is okay you know and also like um and then with the main villain of the season who i really think is my favorite villain of you know like of the show so far is rain and she kind of re and she kind of reminds me of doomsday in smallville like how doomsday has a human counterpart davis bloom and then rain has a human counterpart which is sam and you know, like that's how they're kind of similar to each other to me and I liked how she seems like she she's really Supergirl's villain and not really a villain, a borrowed villain from somebody else or a borrowed villain from Superman or anything like that. So I mean, as much as I do like seeing Superman's villains, you know, make their way into the show, still, I mean, it's fun to see that, you know, Supergirl has her own villains to deal with. And I never read any of the Supergirl comics, so I don't know who her, who her villains are, but I mean, Rain seems to fit in that category, in my opinion, and um, and it almost makes me wish that Supergirl didn't have her own Bizarro in season one. I mean, it feels like you know we can ha sort of have that with Rain, in in a way, even though she's not a clone of Supergirl, but still, you know, she's Kryptonian too. So, yeah, I mean, it's it's, it's something different, you know, and um, and also like um. Like when we find out that uh, Monel, you know, actually makes his way back to the present, and on top of that, he is part of the Legion. And on top of that, he is married to one of the members of the Legion. Oh, I mean, like that's a lot to take in, isn't it? And I admire Supergirl for how she handled that, where she just held it together, like, and she's not really allowing herself to go really that, you know, that. You know, allowing herself to really be that filled or filled with rage or sadness or anything, like, like to the, you know, like to that massive extent. You know what I mean? And um, and I admire how ballsy the writers were in not allowing her and Monel to get back together this season, even though we do know that they do strongly still have feelings for each other, and we know that um, it's inevitable that they may end up back together eventually. But I admire how they sort of kept them from doing that in this season and their separate paths don't allow them to do that for right now at least you know and I also admire how Supergirl is her in, in her own spotlight now and she, you know like in suit season one where she was trapped in Superman's shadow like where everyone referred to her as like Superman's cousin and all that stuff and they kept bringing up Superman you know like in season one and I'm glad that this season has shied, has found its way to step out of that. You know, like where Supergirl is in her own spotlight now. Where it's not like, oh, Superman's cousin. Now she, it's just Supergirl. She is her own, you know, like she is in her own spotlight, like I said. And as much as I do love seeing Superman, even though we've only seen him for a few episodes in this show, I'm, I kind of admire how, we're, how we don't see him at all in this season. Even though I would love to see him again, maybe hopefully next season, hopefully in the next crossover event, where 
when they introduce Batwoman, that's going to be freaking sick. Include Superman and Martian Manhunter into that crossover. Please make it happen, CW. Please find a way around that. Please make it happen. And um, so, yeah, I mean, it's cool to, for Supergirl to be in her own spotlight. And also, where we find out that Supergirl's mother is still alive. And wow. And on top of that, Argo's, the citizens of Argo, like basically the whole population, or I guess the population of Argo is alive and well with her is also. And, um, and yeah, I mean, it almost reminds me of Kandor in the comics, the way they kind of had that in the comics, and it also kind of reminded me of the Supergirl movie from 1984, where we see where, where, uh, where, where Kara is at, you know, like before she has to go to Earth and be Supergirl and, you know, and do her thing. So yeah, it kind of reminds me of that. And I, the way... I mean, when she decides to go to Argo and move there, I mean, she moves there, but she has to come right back to Earth like by the end of the episode. I would have done that differently. I would have had that, like, when it gets to the season finale, everyone is doing their own thing, you know, and um, everyone goes on their own unexpected paths. And I would have had Kara deciding to go to Argo while that's all happening. That's how I would have ended with Supergirl in this season. Like where she decides to move to Argo and just hang up her cape and, and kind of retire from being Supergirl and just going to be on Argo with her mother. That's how I would have ended it. Even though we all know that she'll be back on Earth and then, you know, she'll be back doing her own thing next season. But that's how I would have ended it. Where it makes it look like 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 she's done, you know. I feel like that would have been a more fitting ending, but that's just me personally. And um, and yeah, and the way it does end with that last shot, like what does that mean? We're, we're, we're you know, like we're, we're car seeming, you know, she seemingly shows up somewhere else while she's in National City. Like that, that had something to do with the Legion ring, didn't, didn't it, didn't it? Like, what does that mean? I just, I would love to know what that means. I mean, this season was probably my favorite out of the, out of the three so far. I, mean, I really did enjoy season two. Season one, I did like, even though I did have problems, but I did like. CW did improve the show after it picked it up. So, yeah, I'm looking forward to seeing what happens in season four. And with that all being said, season three gets four chairs fans out of five. So here we go. One, two, three, four epic chair spins. Wow, I can't believe that everything in the Arrowverse lineup is officially on their break. It felt like it was never going to get here. <laughs> as much as I enjoyed it, I'm like, damn, I need a breather. Now I finally have it. So I'm looking forward to what happens next season, like I said. And if you guys enjoyed my review for Season 3, make sure you thumb up the video and click subscribe. If you're new to the channel, thank you for watching. Click that bell icon so you can get, so you can get notified when I upload new videos. And I'll see you guys in my next video. Peace out, y'all.